Hey everybody, we're talking about binomial random variables and how we set those things up. And it's the introductory lesson, and so we're going to formalize this a little bit. Um, the conditions for a binomial setting. Now, by the phrase binomial, you should be expecting something to be about two, and that's true. And it spells out the four, four conditions that you need spell out the word bins. The first one stands for binary. Each trial is supposed each trial can only be a success and a failure. It's not like three options. You either it happens or it doesn't. Each trial needs to be independent. So one trial happening doesn't affect anything in the other trial. Number of trials is fixed. So it says we're going to do this 20 times. It's not one of those instances where you go until you make it. We are going to talk about that, just not for this. And then same probability of success for each trial. So nothing's changing. So you're assuming everything's staying the same throughout each different thing that you do. The formula for it over here looks like this. You've got the probability that x happens k times. So now here is k is the number of successes, n is the number of trials. So we've got that right there, right? p here is the probability of success. And the probability of failure then would be 1 minus p since it's binomial. And if you have k successes, then everything else left in n, so n minus k is the number of failures. Bring that over so it's not quite such an angle. And then here you've got n choose k, and that's an option on your calculator. It goes through and makes sure that order doesn't matter, so it doesn't matter necessarily. It, it takes care of what we did on the previous page where we said, oh, that happens three times. You want to multiply through by three. It helps with that. You can find it underneath math, and you go over here to the probability menu. And you'll see it right there, option number three. And we'll use that here down at the bottom of this example. Okay, so go ahead and hit pause here in a second. You're going to go through and you're going to talk through and see whether or not the situations that we're talking about are fitting the binomial setting. So I'll see you in a minute. All right, first problem, you're playing whack-a-mole. Lots of commentary here. You know that you have an 80% chance of whacking the mole before it drops back in. The moles pop up randomly. You have ability to whack the mole. It is not affected by whether or not you whacked the previous one. There are 20 moles to be whacked during one round. The question is, how many is X is the number of moles that you're going to whack? So in this case here, binary is, um, that's a, you only have two options for it to be binary. There's a success and there's a failure. You either whack the mole or you don't whack the mole. It is independent. Each try is not affected by the results of the previous. They spell that out pretty clearly up here. The number of trials is fixed. It's 20. And then your same probability for success. You only have an 80% chance of making it. Okay, so that falls into yes binomial. Now an example of something that's not binomial would be this, the second one. And there, you're going to play skee ball. You have a 10% probability getting a ball in any 10,000-point hole. Let Y be the number of balls you must roll until you get one in the 10,000-point hole. So your number of trials isn't fixed. You're just going to roll until you make it. That's the reason why this one falls apart. When I do these problems, I think about what each one of these bins say. And in my mind, before I start writing them out, <clears throat> I kind of think it's like binary. Okay, either you're making it or you're not. Independent. Yeah, each roll is going to be independent. Number of trial. Oh, wait, that's where it is. So you're not in the middle of writing all of this stuff up. Because remember, for it to not work, you only need one thing to fall through. All right? If you were trying to prove something is true, you have to prove every single part of the definition. If you want to prove something to be untrue, you just need to show one part to fail. All right, so now you're playing a game called Tsunami Duck Pond. In the Tsunami Duck Pond, there are 100 ducks that get pummeled by tidal waves. You reach in, pull out a duck. If it has a star, you win. If it doesn't have a star, you lose. The company says there's 20 ducks in there that have stars on the bottom out of the 100. So after you're done, you have to put it back into the water as it's all getting mixed up, and then away you go again. And you're going to play the game 10 times. Um, w is going to be the number of wins that you get. So explain why it's, W is a binomial random variable. You either win or you lose. So you get a star or you don't. It's independent because the duck is replaced each time, so you don't have to worry about that. Number of trials is fixed as 10, and we're assuming that since the probability is, since they're saying it's 20 out of 100, it's going to be 20%. Okay? Now, in terms of figuring it out, find the probability of winning exactly three times. We're going to use that formula that we did up on top, and we're going to be using that more as we go. But the probability of winning three is 10 choose three. This is the number of trials. This is how many successes that we're looking for. Now, remember, there's a whole bunch of different ways we can do that, so we need to come up with 
how many different ways. So this is going to help calculate out how many different ways we need to multiply this probability by. Okay, because we know normally it would be three times. You'd have to take the twenty percent three times for three wins, and then the eighty percent three seven times for the not not wins. I guess. Okay. So type this in. We're going to go down to and choose R. We're going to choose 10 and 30. Or 10 and 3, I'm sorry. Make sure you arrow out. 20% raised to the third power. And then 80% raised to the seventh power. And you do it. And you come up with an answer of just over 20%. So you have a probability of winning about 20% of the time. Now, as we go through this, we're going to come up with different things like something similar to expected value. Um, as I said, we're going to deal with how many, how long until you get a success, that type of thing. So anyway, if you have any questions, throw them down below. Obviously, comment, like, subscribe. Thanks, as always, for appreciating all this stuff. And I will see you next time.